Thank you for joining us for our online Bible study at Greater Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, 914 Park Avenue, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37403. Good evening, beloved saints of God. Thank you for being in, being tuned in with us for our Wednesday night Bible study on this August the 25th, 2021. Thank you for being with us as we study God's holy, inerrant, infallible, irrefutable truth, the truth of God's word. God's word is true. And I believe many of you that are tuned in believe wholeheartedly from the depths of your heart that God's word is truth. As we, we've been doing a sermon, a, a, excuse me, a study series out of Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, last week we went from verses 1 through 4. And so this Wednesday night Bible study, we'll pick up at verse 5. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 5. So go ahead and turn in your Bibles. And I pray, keep your Bibles on me. We're going to turn to a couple of other passages that are very important, very important as we study God's Word. And here in Colossians, we're going to go to some reference scriptures. So have your Bibles, get your Bibles. Go ahead and turn in your Bibles, get pen in hand so you can take you some notes, a notepad, pencil, whatever you prefer. And I pray that the Lord will give you a heart to take notes as we study God's holy word. I want to encourage the saints, those who God gives the comfort to uh, our 11 o'clock worship on Sundays. The Lord is showing up blessing our worship with the saints. So the Lord is giving you a comfort to come and worship with us on Sunday, this coming Sunday, which will be the fifth Sunday of August. Come and worship with us this fifth Sunday at the 11 o'clock hour. We'll start promptly at 11 o'clock as we worship the God of the believers salvation the God of the redeemed salvation we welcome all come and pray in route here that the Lord will give you a mindset of worship and praise as he gathers us here in God's house if it's his will on this coming fifth Sunday of August uh, look forward to seeing everyone here for worship all right Colossians chapter 3 and we'll pick up at verse 5 of Colossians chapter 3 on last week we left out from four where the word of God tells us when Christ who is our life shall appear then shall ye also appear with him in glory and Christ is the believers life in uh, the book of Acts 17 and 28 the Bible says for in him being in Christ we live move and have our being it's in Christ and this is what verse 4 was talking about in Colossians chapter 3 when Christ who is our lives our lives we live for Christ we have our being for Christ we move for Christ the Bible says then shall ye also appear with him in glory we covered that and so understanding it's all of Christ and when we close out this lesson if the Lord allows us to get to verse 11 tonight that point will be reiterated our lives are all for Christ now I'm talking to believers I'm talking to saved folk our lives and as we go through this earthly journey, God's word is going to show us some of the things that impact our lives. That's what I was saying. We got some reference scriptures we're going to uh, refer to and, and be prepared to write them down. I'm going to read to, through them. I won't elaborate because there are several verses, but I want you to have those for your study time and for your notes as far as to understand what God has given us here in this lesson. So verse 5 of Colossians 3 says, Mortify. Therefore, your members, which are upon the earth, and know it makes a distinction and identifies what it's talking about, the members that we are to mortify. First of which, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. I'm going to go through each one of those. But when it says mortify, when the word of God says mortify, the word of God is telling us to put to death. And it's, it's saying it in a strong way. Mortify, put to death, make dead, wipe out, bring to an end. It says mortify, therefore your members. And it's talking about members of the various sins that are expressed by the members of our human body. A human body to mortify them, put them to death, bring them to an end, to, to, to 
put to death. And again, there's a strong inclination behind this. First of which, fornication. Fornication is any activity done outside of holy matrimony between a man and a woman. Any physical activity, fornication, any physical activity done outside of holy matrimony. And holy matrimony is marriage between man and woman. But anything other than that, outside of that, is fornication. And the Bible here is saying, put it to death. Bring an end to it. Stop it. Wipe it out. Fornication, uncleanliness, uncleanliness, anything that is impure, things that are not pure, that are not clean, that does not bring glory to God. Now, these are fleshly acts. These are acts that the members of our bodies will actively participate in if we don't mortify them, bring an end to them. Uncleanliness, inordinate affection, the Bible says here, which is passions, the different passions, the different passions that will just get you messed up. It's one thing to be passionate about the gospel, passionate about the truth of God's word. But when our fleshly members become impassioned with things, it causes us to do things we should not do. And the Bible here again, it says mortify these things. What caused inordinate affection, inordinate passions, things that will bring harm, detrimental harm, physically and spiritually to our bodies. And remember, the Bible, said, the Bible says our bodies of the temple of God. Now remember, all this is going about because Paul is instructing the church of Colossae because of the heretical teachings that's going on, saying that this is okay. It's okay to do this. It's all right to act this way. It's okay to associate with this type. Uh, there's nothing wrong with men with men, women with women. I'm gonna show you a passage of scripture. If we're Bible believers, and I am a Bible believer, that Go is the word of God is against these things. You know, anything that's that's opposite in opposition to the word of God, we must put it to death. Evil concupiscence, which is desire. Desire that's evil. Desire that will cause you to do something or act some kind of way or get yourself in a compromising position. If those are the desires. That will be harmful to us. And the Bible says, mortify them, put them in death. Bring an end to them. And covetousness. Oh my God. And when it says about covetousness, look at the latter word. It says, which is idolatry. Covetousness means des uh, uh, desiring what someone else. Now understand this about being covetous. Covetous is insidious. And when I say it's insidious, covetous will make one in a gradual way in a subtle way, bring about some harmful effect. When you start desiring what someone else has, when you start desiring another man's wife, when you start desiring another wife's husband, when you start desiring things that other people have, it becomes insidious. And again, when I say insidious, it becomes a way where we start plotting and scheming and gradually how we can can attain what's not ours. And in essence, what happens is it, be, it brings about harmful effect. It brings about a serious detriment. And the word of God, again, in verse five, that strong inclination, mortify it, make dead, wipe it out, put it to death, fornication, put it to death, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, put it to death, evil concupiscence, put it to death, Covetousness, which is idolatry. You begin to worship these things. You begin to make these things, these individuals, your God. And the Bible says mortify them. Put an end to it. Wipe it out. Put it to death. Notice what verse 6 says. For which things, for which things sake, the wrath 
of God cometh on the children of disobedience. You know, people always want to take the easy way out and say God is a God of love. God, the God of the Bible is a God of love. He is. God, the Bible says God is love. But don't misunderstand this. I'm talking to believers. God has wrath. God has anger. God is at enmity, which means he's against sinful flesh. And notice what it says in verse 6. For which things, those things that we detail, the way that the world lives, the way that the world lives, and not the lives Jesus Christ require. Let me say again, for which things say, the things say that it's talking about the ways of the world, the things of the world. Beloved of God, we are in the world. But we're not of this world. So the, what, what the world calls right, the values, the values of this world, the things of this world, the things that the world will say is okay. And I know the, the media is highlighting all kind of homosexuality and condoning it if it's okay. It's not. Those are the ways of the world. Because notice what the verse 6 says, For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. And let me reiterate again. God is a God of love. But God has wrath. He has anger. He has enmity against those who are disobedient to what he declares in his word. That's why we're taking Bible study and being strong about it. Reference scriptures I want you to write down. Romans chapter 1 verses 24 through 32. Romans chapter 1. Verses 24 through 32. These passages of scripture are no stranger to us. We have studied these passages before. We've gone there before. Now again, we, we're, we're coinciding with, with Colossians 3 and 6 says, For which things sake, the things of this world, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Well, what are these things? Let's look at it. Romans chapter 1, starting at verse 24. And I'm just going to read. I'm going to read it slowly because I want to go on and finish some more out of Colossians. But I, it's important that we pinpoint and point these things out. Look at verse 24 of Romans chapter 1. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Notice who being disobedient to God. Notice what happens. Verse 25 of, of Romans chapter 1. These individuals who change the truth of God into a lie. Do we not see that taking place today? Who change the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator. The creator is the one who is blessed forever. The Bible gives himself an amen. The creator is the one who is blessed forever. But we live in a day where truth is changed into a lie and the creature is worshipped more than the creator. Look at verse 26. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Woman with woman. This stuff that's saying it's right, it's a lie. It's not the truth of God. Go on. It doesn't stop just on women. And verse 27. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving them in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat which means they these men who are with men going away from women they're reaping what they're sown in different ailments within their bodies you know do we not see this taking place today men with men and it blows my mind I said man that's that's that guy right there on the dl on the down low on the dl so he he's messing with someone's life he's married got a wife girlfriend but then messing with men that's wrong. Women with women. That's wrong. There's no way you can make that right. It's not natural. Look at verse 28. 
And even as they, we're in Romans chapter 1, verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God, check this out. This is biblical teaching. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate, a debased, a, a deceitful mind. He gave them over to deceive themselves. To do those things which are not convenient, which are not fitting, which are not right. God allowed it to happen. They turned away from, went from the truth to a lie. Look, verse 29 of Romans 1. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, which we covered over in Colossians, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, Whisperers, all these evil things. Look at verse 30. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Look at verse 31. Without understanding, they have no understanding. Covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable. Unmerciful. When you see that word impl implacable, it means unforgiving. How many times you come across people that are so unforgiving? I mean, you see it. Go back and read. I don't have time. This is not what this study is about. But this is to uh, affirm what we read in, in Colossians 3 and 6. And then check out verse 32 of Romans chapter 1. Who knowing that this is the thing right here. Who knowing the judgment of God. Knowing God's judgment is coming. That they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in doing them. So they're not ignorant in what's coming. They're not ignorant that God has a judgment. They're not ignorant. But they blatantly rebel against God. Brothers and sisters, I'm talking to believers. When they said mortify believers, look at what the word of God. We must stand on the truth of God's word. Don't compromise with no one, nobody, not even for yourselves. They are blatant. The Bible said these individuals blatantly, that's why they can parade all over the place and this is okay. Beloved, we must call wrong, wrong. Right, right, right is the right of God's word, the truth of God's word. But the, in that verse 32, just to summarize, it's saying they blatantly rebel against the truth of God's word, knowing the truth. Go back over to Colossians chapter 3, verse 7. It says, now we got to get honest about ourselves. We ain't no pot of pure breads. We ain't done everything right. It's by the grace of God we are who we are. Look at verse 7. In the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. We had our day. <laughs> we had our day. And I ain't throwing no stone. I'm going to just say it this way. I had my day. I had my day where I was rebellious to God. I had my day where I was rebellious to God, where I was disobedient to God, where I did commit fornication, where I did lie, where I did cheat, where I did, where I was, when I was a whisperer or a backbiter. You got to be honest with yourselves. That's where we get help. I rebelled against the truth of God's word. There was a day where the truth of God's word didn't mean anything to me. I blatantly rebelled knowing that God's judgment was pending. And notice what it says again in verse 7. In the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. Nobody's exempt. All have sinned. All. All means everybody. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. This is why for us who are believers, those of us who uh, who will not compromise and take down from the truth of God's word no matter what. We acknowledge we are who we are by God's amazing grace. It's by God's grace and God's grace alone. The only reason I'm sitting here teaching tonight on, on this Wednesday Bible study, August the 25th, 2021, is by the grace of God. The only reason I can sit here and be honest about the walk that I did before the Lord converted me is because of God's grace. He's him giving me this understanding. Making me to understand I am who I am by the grace of God. I will not take any credit for salvation. God did it all. Jesus Christ paid it all. All to him we owe. Sin left a crimson stain. But Jesus Christ washed the believer whiter than snow. 
So we had our day. We have we can't be judgmental. We can tell the truth. We can declare the truth of God's word, but we can't be judgmental to judge anybody to hell. I tell anybody the truth with the hopes that God will take that seed and impart it and engraft it in their heart that he will give them spiritual and biblical understanding what is the way of Christ? What is the way of the word of God? Look at verse 8. Let's 7 and 8 together. 7 again in Colossians chapter 3. In the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. But now, that's what I'm talking about, the grace of God. But now, verse 8. Ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Now, in verse 5, we saw the members that acted out in our flesh. That's what we saw in verse 5. How members in the sinful, varying sinful ways. That's why we went over to Romans. We all have had our day in the flesh. Now, here come, we come to verse 8 of Colossians chapter 3. But now, it also tells us to put off, put off which means along with mortify, verse 5, put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Now, <laughs> these sins are sins of the mouth. Now, I'm going to go, I got to go one more place because it's a lot of scriptures. But I, I, write these down. That's why I want you to have a pad, pen, Bible to write it down and refer back to it. Go over to James. James chapter 3. Beginning at verse 1. James chapter 3. Remember I told you anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. These are sins of the mouth. And look at the danger of this. James chapter 3. Beginning at verse 1. Please write these down. And refer back to them in your independent study. You ought to have Romans. Uh, I gave you Romans earlier. 1, 24 through 32. Refer back to those in your independent study. Now we're in James chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Look what it says. Chapter 3 of James. Starting at verse 1. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Now let me, let me quickly tell you what that's saying in verse 1. As I'm teaching and instructing in this Bible study, I got to teach and instruct correctly. Because if I don't, condemnation comes against me. Verse 1 of chapter 3, I got to teach correctly. No matter how I hit, and it's hitting me. It's cutting me. These, these things that I lived in, they real in my life. But I cannot avoid teaching them. I cannot avoid instructing or rightly dividing the word of truth. I got to say it and teach it the way God says. So it says, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. If you're not going to teach it properly, and I'm talking about anybody who calls themselves a teacher, if you're not going to teach it properly, don't teach. Because what you're doing is bringing a greater condemnation on yourself, teaching erroneously, teaching heresy. And you remember that's what Paul is driving home, the point of heresy. You bring a greater condemnation. Look at verse 2. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. And I don't know anybody like that. <laughs> that's why we depend on God. If we don't offend in any way, we, we complete. Look at verse 3. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. Look at the practical example God gives us from the word. Verse 4 of James chapter 3. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small him, a rudder that's in the back of the ship, whethersoever the governor or the pilot listen, the pilot, the one who drives the ship, he turns the, 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 the wheel of the ship and that rudder in this great ship caused that ship to change course. Look at verse 5. Even so, the tongue is a little member 
Remember we were talking about members back over in Colossians? The tongue is a little member and boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue, verse 6, is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. This tongue. Look at verse 7. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and have been tamed of mankind. <laughs> but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Check out nine of Romans, I mean, I'm sorry, sorry James chapter three. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, this tongue, and therewith curse we men. <laughs> which are made after the similitude or the image of God. And verse 10 says, Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, <laughs> these things ought not so to be. <laughs> I'll tell you, let's, go, let's go back over to Colossians. But now, verse 8 of Colossians 3 and, and 8. But now ye also mortify, put it to death, Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication. Put it out of your mouth. Look at verse 9. Lie not to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deed. That word old man is the unregenerate man. Man, unregenerate. The old nature that was in us is talking to same people now. It says we shouldn't lie to one another. We shouldn't be deceptive to one another. We are not to be distorting the truth with one another. How can I say Jesus Christ, who declares himself is the truth, and did I follow Christ, who is truth, but I intentionally distort the truth of God's word? I intentionally lie to my brother. Back over to Romans, where the Bible says people believe a lie before they believe a truth. And that is the sort of case. But brothers and sisters of Christ, we are not lie one to another. That ought not be so. We tell the truth because Jesus Christ is truth. I tell my church all this, this all the time. I love my church enough to tell the truth. I know my, my church think I just be making up these phrases just to say, no, no, no. There are always some biblical implication behind it. I love the people of God, not only friendship, but I love the people of God enough to tell you the truth. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm not going to give you what, what has your ears itching, to scratch that itch in your ear. The truth matters. And we're going to see this as we close out this Bible study. Again, verse 9 of Colossians 3 says, Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. And then verse 10, And have put on the new man. The re the, the regenerated man, the new creature in Christ Jesus. Put it on. It's like changing clothes. You take off them old dirty, smelly, stinky clothes. And, and I hope you take a bath when you do it too. And then you put on clean, fresh, iron, starch clothes. You put that other stuff away and put on clean stuff. You cleaned yourself up. And so it takes God to clean us up. And if we're saying God has regenerated us and clean, cleaned us, now our responsibility, because we do have a responsibility as Christ, our responsibility is not as a salvation. It's Christ who saves. But once he saves us and enlightens us and gives us understanding and knowledge, then the things that we mortify and put off, we do so. And we don't lie about it. Look, it says, and put on the new man, verse 10, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. We are new creations in Christ Jesus. God created us. And so he's given us renewed in knowledge. That renewed means to development in knowledge. Renewed in knowledge, to develop in knowledge. We, we thirst and hunger for better and deeper understanding of the truth of God's word. So we'll know how to put off and to mortify 
and to put on and how God has cleansed us up and how we're not to use our tongue as a, as a, a weapon or a consuming fire. How we're not to get engaged in, with the members of our flesh in, in compromising situations. That comes by God renewing us and giving us an understanding and having a thirst and a hunger. I want to thank you, brothers and sisters, for being tuned in for Bible study. Because what this shows, those who are week in and week out, tuning in, studying with us the Word of God, there is a hunger, there is a thirst for the knowledge of God, the ways of God, the values of God, the, the ordinances and the precepts, the teachings of God, the doctrines of God. All this within me, I want the Lord to use me to teach soundly. Sound biblical doctrine. Biblical doctrine. Not the doctrines of this world. Not the ideologies of this world. Not the foolishness of mankind. But the truth of God's word. Notice it says here. Put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. It's all about Christ, you all. It's all about Jesus Christ. It's about the more we know and understand about God, our lives, our likeness of him will show. The more we know and understand it, our likeness will show. Christian, Christ-like, it is showing us that we are Christ. And lastly, verse 11. Check this out. We dealt with this over in, 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 in James, where there should be no divide amongst God's people. I said this at church Sunday. That's why I encourage saints to come to church. You you get such strength and edification from the body of believers when the God assembles us together. I, I, I'm a, I'm a, this is my testimony. I'm going to close here. I had a, a moment of frailty Sunday. I, I needed some edification. And, and I, was, I had a burden on me that was so heavy. And being in God's house, God used believers, showing up, stomped down, saints of God who edified. Who came, who, would, who came with the purpose of oneness. Remember, we say here at Greater Friendship, we're united in Christ. Word, love, and service. And that was indicated for me as the pastor and a fellow brother of my brothers and sisters in Christ. There cannot be a divide amongst God's people. Do not, I said this Sunday, do not allow a, a political affiliation to divide, to divide you. Do not allow this vaccine and non-vaccine to divide you if you've been the body of Christ. Do not allow te COVID testing or non-COVID testing to divide you. Those are the wiles and the schemes and the tricks of the devil. The body of Christ is united. One body, many members. And then look at verse 11 of Colossians 3 that drives this home. It says, where there, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision, nor uncircumcision, barbarian, or Scythian, bond, nor free, but Christ is all. When it says Christ is all, it's saying for the believer. Now, I'm talking to believers as I close this Bible study out on August the 25th. Talk to believers. Christ is all to the believer. Christ is the one who matters. That there is nothing else. Christ. And in all, all the believers. So when Christ is all that matters to the believers, and we acknowledge that it's Christ who's in us, there cannot be a divide. We be, I don't care if you're Greek or Jew, if you're a Christian Greek and you're a Christian Jew, you're one. Whether you've been uncircumcised or circumcised in the flesh. We dealt with this in the, in the study a few weeks ago. Circumcision of the heart. Has your heart been circumcised? Not by the hands of man, but has Christ Jesus circumcised you and cut off that old fleshly thought and mindset. And if he has, there's a oneness. And then when it goes on, it gives barbarian, Scythian, bond, nor free. There is no classification or nationality. It amazes me how people put an embodiment on race. And don't you know, on the Sundays that we collectively come together, that is the most segregated day. You know, you got your white church, you got your black churches, you got the big church, you got the little churches. It's the most segregated. But we go on the glory anyhow. You got churches don't welcome white folk in their congregation. You got churches don't welcome black folk in their congregation. There's uneasiness. No one should be made uneasy in God's house. 
If God sends whomever, whatever their nationality is, whatever their race is, whatever their culture might be, we have a movement now that's against different cultures. You know, man, I'm telling you, when the Lord has set you free, you're free indeed. And so when the Bible here is, is, is denouncing and is killing schism and division, that cannot be amongst the people of God. And I'm trying to, as much as God will give me on this that lesson, to drive this home. If you're here to hear from the word, if you God sends you here to hear from the word of God, I will preach and teach and instruct anyone who God sends here to hear what thus saith the Lord. Black, white, it doesn't matter to me. Hispanic, I don't care. Whatever your, your, your social status is, rich, poor, whatever your nationality is, whatever culture you were brought up in, it's not about, the, the, the ecclesia is not a social gathering. And understand this, I'm closing my Bible. The ecclesia is an organism. Because you hear over and over again, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the members, the body, the members, the body. The ecclesia, the church, is a body, not an organization. We're not, so many churches are, are, are built on the platform of an organization. And has, infilt has allowed the world to infiltrate with organizational means. The hierarchy. No, Jesus Christ is the body. Jesus is the head. And we are the members. We, we are the bands. Remember we dealt last week, we are the bands, we are the, we're the, we're the joints. We are a body, a living organism. Not an organization, not a social club. And we do it the way the Bible instructs us to do it. I pray, beloved, it's some high cotton and some rough teaching. But if he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. If God has given you ears to hear, hear. So put on, mortify, put it off. And then those things that God tells us to put on, it's what we do. We do it to the glory of God and to the edification of the body of Christ. The Lord bless you. Hope to see you this coming Sunday, this fifth Sunday, as God gathers here to bless and honor his holy name. Pray with me. Father, thank you for the teachings and the instructions of your word. Thank you, Lord. I pray that you have used your servant to clearly and to rightly divide the word of God. Lord, I repent because in many of those areas, it cut against me. But I thank you, Lord, for giving me a hunger and an appetite and the means to want knowledge from the word of God. And I pray so for my brothers and sisters that are tuned in, that are listening in, that are joining us in this Bible study. That Lord, that your Holy Spirit will enable and empower to give a yearning thirst and appetite for the truth of God's word. That we might become stronger and mature in our walking and our talking, our lives for Christ. And that this, the influence of this world, the influences of this world will become less and less and less. And your influence from the word of God will, will move greater in us. Because we who are the believers of Christ, we acknowledge greater is he that is within me than he that's within the world. Lord, thank you for these verses that you've given us out of Colossians chapter 3. And thank you for taking us to the reference scriptures out of Romans and out of James. I pray in the independent study of the saints that you will enlighten even more so as they study, as we study the word of God. Thank you for this day. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Thank God for our Savior and our Lord. It's in the name of Jesus that we offer this prayer. And for Jesus' name's sake, amen. Thank you, Jesus.